Halloween in Gowanus. And I'm here with legendary filmmaker Cecilia Condit, who is a writer, editor, director, performer in a huge body of work, including possibly in Michigan, which is now on Eternal Family TV. How do I meet the strangest men? They always seem to find me. Remember that time way back when I... Cecilia, the big idea we had for this interview was that we would make the set scary because the movie's kind of scary. And we all have our own little masks and stuff because um, we did all that for you. And But we didn't even think until this morning, do you like scary movies or things that are scary? No, I don't. Hmm. I'm very sensitive to scary. I get frightened very easily. Hmm. And you make stuff that's scary because? I'm so frightened. <laughs> Yeah, can everybody take their masks off? <laughs> okay, cool. Well then, how did you get permission to film in the mall? Oh, you know, like sometimes your hard work pays off. So I asked somebody if I could and they all the other malls said no. So I went to this one mall and I said, I am not leaving here until they say yes. So I got there when the mall opened and up. And I went to the main and office. I went to the main office and at nine o'clock it opened and I sat in the waiting room until the boss was leaving and he said, you're still here. And I said, yes, I need to shoot in this mall. And he said, you can have 20 minutes before we open at 10 o'clock and no more. Wow. And he says, you can do it as much as you want, but that's all you get. That is unbelievable. You shot the mall for 15 minutes at a time. Yes, and believe me, sometimes we got oh, no farther than to figure out that perfume area really is well lit because they make the lights in the perfume area. You look glamorous. This one here smells great. Which one? Mmm. Smells like mother's crazy sister Kate. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I do. I can tell you when I was behind uh, Jill Sands and Karen Scudani, and I went with Arthur, I went, no, 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 silly. And then we did it in reverse. That was a morning. Hmm. Yeah, years later, they told you that you were mean to them, right, yeah. during the shoot. They, there's only so much you can expect of people. Right, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I didn't pay that well. Jill told me one day that I never paid her anything. And I said, really, nothing? She says, I would remember. And I went, I'm so sorry. Do you want me to pay you now? And she says, oh, no, please. I don't know. I wasn't as generous a person as I am now. Mm. It, I was a, a person who had been given very little and gave people very little. Mm. But that isn't who I am now. Sharon attracted violent men. Strangely, she had a way of making the violence seem like it was their idea. She had a way of making them think the violence was their idea? That's crazy. What does that mean? I was sitting around wondering how I should start it, and I wanted a complex thing. And um, I was hanging out with Karen, who did the music, and also who wrote the whole Animal Cannibal song. And I said, uh, I was having a problem with, and he said, this guy who was her boyfriend at the time, he says, I'll write it. So we uh, sat down and said, like, oh, we'll make the violence your idea. And I went, okay, that's something that I don't believe. But if I do that, I'm playing Arthur. And so everything is wrong. And so it's hard to be anything but right about that. And so I wasn't prepared to quite make it all one-sided. Is there sensitivity around, like possibly in Michigan, and exploring violence against women? Or did you, through humor, it's been transformed into something? I, uh, I took it so seriously. I, did, I knew that I was making something that was at times funny. I mean, I, I thought the frog mask was funny. I knew Arthur was terrifying. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's actually more terrifying now than he was then for some reason. It's something harder for me to grasp that this cannibal should have a constantly open mouth. He's always ready for business. I can't see where I'm going very well. Ha <laughs> ha ha. Ha ha. I look. I look slowly. Ashley, should Arthur say something? 
Oh, 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 okay, spooky. Okay, um, you think you kill me, but boogeyman never go away. It is very unsettling. Where did you get the name Arthur from? I wanted something, I felt like art was used against women so often. So I thought I'd call him Arthur. That's funny. And where did you find this mask? In the basement of a dental school. The part, the man that's actually in it, who's wearing the masks, then he takes them off. He is scarier when he's not wearing the mask to me than when he is. Because there's something about like the build up to his appearance and then suddenly he's not wearing the mask at all. And I'm like, oh, I don't. I don't even want to like see him. He was a scary Prince Charming. Yeah. I know. I told him I needed a knife and he pulled one out of his one boot and then I said, you got, I was laughing, I joking, I said, you got a gun? He had one too on him. So he was really something. Wow. Where'd you find that guy? Uh, he was a friend of Karen's. Mm. It was hard to find a Prince Charming that was complicated. It was a lot of very pretty people, but he had a certain energy about him that I thought was remarkable. Yeah. I wanted him to have some of the sexiness that was dangerous. It's also funny the way that he's described, like the line in the film about, um, is it he'd forgotten everyone? He'd forgotten who he, who he was, who he'd known. Yes, yeah. and as if, yeah, so that he could do things that he didn't have to worry about because he could forget that he did them. So he was much more dangerous than someone who could hold on to the things that he had done. Mm -hmm. Forgetting is a, is a powerful thing that allows people to do things. And as a culture, of course, we are really brilliant at it. We don't remember anything. And we buy some story that somebody gives us and we buy it collectively. You said that your work has made you heal and that you've had this experience of healing. And I said this to you before, but I've just like never heard anybody say that. I feel like everybody's sort of after some kind of healing, but rarely do I hear of anyone finding it. And sometimes, you know, through therapy or something, but to think of someone's art practice actually bringing them to a positive place, that kind of blows my mind. I feel like that's like, well, then you figured it all out. Well, I, I, I meditate because I'm epileptic. And so it was one of the things that I did so that I didn't have seizures when I went off medication when I was right before possibly and there's something in the quieting of uh, the present moment that gives me a certain power and it makes it different than all the rest of my voices I hear in my heads. Mm. But now I'm really different than I was. In fact, once in a while I'll ask friends of mine, uh, I'm not the same as I was five years ago. Is this right? And they say, you're not anything like you were. Wow. <laughs> and I say, this is real. And they said, everyone I said, I said, oh, yeah, it's really real. It has, yeah. That's so funny. I would think they would just be like, oh, what are you talking about? Because people pay so little attention to other people. I know, but I really <laughs> changed because I've been pretty crazy. We got these confetti cannons. Have you done one of these before? You just turn no. it left. So that's all I do. Yes. I just turn it left. Yes. So we're going to have a time. We're yes. We're just going to do this. So. Oh. So sweet. It's really fun. I've never done this before today. Okay, that's everything that you need to know. Now go watch Possibly in Michigan on Eternal Family. <laughs>